fourth video in my Boise State 2022 football preview series, where today we're looking at the special teams. I have a very special guest on today, former Boise State kicker Tyler Rousa. Very excited to get to talk about the Boise State special teams. It's a unit that had some great moments last season, has really started to pick up since that memorable 2018 season, which wasn't necessarily how special teams wanted to go for Boise State. Since then, Boise State showed a lot of improvement in their special teams units, has had two great back-to-back -back kickers in Sacks and Dalmas. Of course, a great kicker currently on the team in Dalmas. It'll be exciting. We're going to talk about the kicking game, punting game, return games, everything involved with special teams. Of course, I have a Boise State great here on the show in Tyler Rouse, who will talk a little bit about his career, what he did at Boise State, what he's done since then. And then we're going to kind of wrap up here with some predictions, keys to the game for Boise State special teams this season. So let's just get right into it then. Tyler, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for coming on. No, I appreciate you, man. This is exciting. This is fun to do. Um, always love talking Boise State football. Well, you've done a lot of stuff with Boise State, especially your time at Boise State. Memorable 34 out of 43 uh, kicking for Boise State. Very memorable junior year, 25 out of 30. Uh, that's ninth in the Boise State record books for overall field goal percentage. And you are have the fifth most field goals made of any Boise State kicker all time. Uh, you also, when you made a 51-yard field goal versus Virginia, a game that I was actually in attendance for. That was the first time a Boise State kicker had made a 50-plus yard kick since Broxman in 2010. I went nuts. The other UVA fans are looking at me like, what, it's just a field goal. I was like, you don't understand. This is huge. <laughs> don't make a lot of kickers that, that kick that far uh, for Boise State. So that was an amazing moment and one I definitely engraved on my mind. Uh, and then you scored the first points in the XFL Startup League, and then you did, had a great time there, 9 out of 12, 3 out of 3 from 50-plus yards. And then also you just completed – the first startup season for the USFL Bandits, where you went 9 out of 13, including a game-winning kick versus the Houston Gamblers. Let's just start off right off the bat here with the Q&A. What's it been like participating in two startup leagues, and what's that, what that process has been like for you? Yeah, no, it's been great. Um, it's It's been something completely different, obviously, than when you're in college and stuff like that, where you know, you're, you're dealing with different variables that you didn't know were into play, especially with some of these leagues where – you know, you're trying to figure out practice times. Coaches are trying to figure out, okay, what are we doing? What do we need to do? Um, and a lot of that time, you know, they're trying to get offense, defense figured out. And so there's there's less time spent on special teams than, you know, anything. So that's been a little bit of uh, adjusting and a learning curve with it. But it's been awesome, especially getting to know a lot of the guys, um, as well as, you know, taking part in the AAF before, you know, they went another direction. And then I was playing arena. Um, I did the spring league as well in 2018 and it's tell you what it's it's been fun a lot of guys a lot of faces I've come across and a lot of stories I've learned and um, there's so many lessons and and things that I've I've had with it that it's it's been a blessing it's been fun that I've been able to still play man it's and the USFL is great um, and and signed for a year or two if I go back and so we'll see but it's been great. Well, talking about the Bandits and this season last year, what was – can you describe a favorite part of playing with them this season? Any moments that really stick out? Um, I mean, obviously hitting the game winners, it was great. Uh, and just towards the end of the game there, it's – you know, you always see it. It's like, all right, you know, if we get in the right position, I could hit a game winner here, and we did. Um, but most of the time it's, you know, just getting to know guys and just establishing and building that camaraderie with people and, and learning where people have come from and where they want to go and – and playing for something that's bigger than yourself is is always something that, you know, I've, I've always enjoyed. It's the locker room that, you know, really kind of keeps you going more than anything. And and just that overall feeling of, of succeeding is is infectious with, you know, playing football. And so um, I've enjoyed it all. I've you know, every step of the process I've never taken for granted. And I think that's the best part that, you know, it's it's a good, uh, good trait for myself that I always compliment myself with is I'm always in the moment. I always appreciate what I've got going on. I've always appreciated that, you know, I'm, I'm in a good spot to where I'm, you know, I'm living a dream every day. Well, after that uh, post game celebration, did you get any calls from Dancing with the Stars or anything like that? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> that was a uh, one time thing. I, you know, I don't want to say I got pushed into the middle, but, you know, if you get pushed in, you got to do something. And that's what happened. But no, it was good. Well, honestly, it's better than probably I'd be able to come up with on the spot like that. So showing that kickers can dance, too. I like that. <laughs> uh, what's, what's next for you now? I know you said that obviously USFL is definitely something that that league is able to get back on and come back next season. I think it was it had a lot of interest. It built a lot of stuff there. But do you think uh, is there anything else in the books or in the works here coming up that you want to talk about? Yeah, I mean, hopefully there's, you know, some more NFL workouts that I'll attend. Um, 
you know, there's been a handful over the years that I've been to and done well with and, and continue to, you know, build a good, strong foundation of my name with the NFL. So hopefully more workouts, more opportunities. If not, again, I have, um, I've signed with the XFL or I'm sorry, with the USFL, um, to play there. Uh, there could have been an XFL opportunity, but you know, nothing's a for sure thing. And with the USFL, it's, I had that second year contract that I just said, you know what, I've never had a for sure thing with a year two with the league. I'm going to sign it because they, they plan on coming back for a second year. So, you know, if nothing else happens, I'll go back to the USFL for you uh, for a year or two. And, and from there we'll see, but you know, hopefully there's more NFL opportunities to where I can go, you know, go out there and show what I can do. Well, and obviously that's the goal of the USFL is kind of be that kind of in between exhibition type of league where they, uh, promote their players and give them opportunities to move up into the NFL. I look around the, the league, every, the NFL specifically, every single season, and I see guys, especially I watch a lot of Dallas games because Kellen Moore is over there, and I see guys missing kicks, and I go, man, how is Rousa not in this league? Definitely deserve to, man. Hopefully we get to see something about that coming forward, but regardless, USFL is a great opportunity. It's been fun getting to just watch you out there on the field again, and uh, we'll just hope that um, more big things are in your future. So kind of talking more about the kicking mindset itself here with the Q&A set. Section, kind of moving more into a little bit more practicality as related to Boise State. Um, something that gets brought up a lot of times, and there's a lot of different views on it. What's your perspective on icing the kicker? Do you think that is effective? I mean, obviously you don't want to give away anything, but do you think that's an effective strategy? What are your thoughts on that? I think it just depends on who it is. Um, you know, for me, myself, I I actually don't mind if, if a coach ices me. It kind of gives me a little bit more time to mentally prepare and go through um, you know, kind of step by step of what I need to do. And it's one of those things where actually I learned it early on from uh, Steve Nash. So Steve Nash, actually, he went through play by play with his free throw shooting and he's one of the best free throw shooters of all time. And so what he said was, you know, before each free throw or before his first one, he would shoot without the ball, visually watch it go through in that visualization part. And so I think with me, if, you know, if I get ice, I have more time to visualize that ball going through and, and take myself step by step um, through it. And there's, you know, there's other guys where they don't, you know, they don't want to be ice because they just want to go in, you know, the less thinking, the better, and they want to bang it out. And, and that's just what they want to do. Uh, but for myself, I don't mind either or, um, you know, it just kind of just depends on the scenario, what's going on and how I'm feeling that day. What's your main strategy? for staying ready on the sidelines. I mean, it's hard for kickers because they get either praised or damned depending on what ends up happening in the game. Uh, you know, obviously they're kind of on the sideline there and then they get brought in in these key moments and everything is, is hangs on that one kick. But they're a lot of, most of the game, 90 plus percent of it, they're just standing on the sidelines kind of just spectating there. How do you manage to stay in the game and keep that game time energy going the whole time so you're ready when your name gets called? Yeah. I mean, it's one, it's, you know, finding a way to stay loose the whole time and not just be tense. Um, you know, the people that tense up the most are usually the ones that flinch the most as well. Uh, so just staying loose, but also just staying mentally in the game, know what's going on and, and being able to, you know, mentally, again, be ready. The mental side is the biggest part is, is mentally being there because physically you have so many guys who can do so many good things, but it's the mental aspect that'll, you know, kind of keep you in the game. And so, Mentally staying in it, physically just staying loose, um, not letting too much get to me and just figuring out what my swing is all the time and, and being able to get the sweet spot and, you know, make the kick. It's all I need to do at the end of the day. Now, Boise State, of course, has a, the best field in the nation, that blue turf there. Is it different? You know, a lot of people talk about the, the, the technical advantage of playing on the blue versus playing on other fields. Do you, do you as a kicker, obviously there's so many factors that go into focusing and making that kick. Is, is there a difference for you when you're kicking on the blue versus kicking on the green? I know you've done a lot of practice on the blue over the years. Um, if you make it a distraction, it can be, but if you don't think about it and you just kind of, you know, do what you do, there shouldn't be any reason why it's different. Um, especially a lot of my friends who've come and kicked on the blue and, you know, either with me or against us, same thing. Um, unless you really think about it, unless you make it a distraction, it can be a distraction. But other than that, it, there's really not much of a difference. You're just, you know, you see ball kick ball at the end of the day. Well, talking about one last part here about your personal journey, you transferred from Juco realm to the uh, 
double A FBS level. And Bowie State, of course, has a lot of guys that they bring up from those JUCO ranks. Uh, Sachs was another player that came from the JUCO to the FBS level. Um, what is that transition like? I mean, obviously, you've talked about playing in different startup leagues, and you've also played at different college levels as well. What's that transition like going from that JUCO side to that FBS uh, side of things? You are surrounded by guys who, you know, football is your last resort. And either sometimes you have guys who come from backgrounds where football is their way out or football is the only thing to do, or they just want to play and the Juco levels, you know, they're okay with that. Uh, so you're surrounded by people who, you know, football is, is a part of their life, not just something that they're able to do, not just something that, you know, they're, you know, physically able or God gifted to do. It's something that is literally their life. So I always say, you know, Juco, guys have a I always say have a little bit more of a hunger for the game than anybody else because it's you know it's not like they're walking on somewhere it's not that like they got the opportunity because most of the time if they have the opportunity they'd be somewhere else so it's that last line of defense and you know you come across a lot of different stories and a lot of different people and I think early on that was where I I learned to appreciate the game even more than what I did even in high school and you know just being able to have that grind and know what I'm doing and, and knowing my capabilities on my own is, you know, learning that early on was, was very key to my success. I, that's where I say, I always, you know, I always tell people if, if you want to really love the game and you want to grind and you know, you want to be at the next level, go to junior college, figure it out. You could also figure yourself out and go from there. Well, thank you so much for this little Q&A section. We're going to roll here into the 2021 retrospective, and then we'll start talking about this Boise State football team and what we might expect from them coming into this 2022 season. Talking about the 2021 retrospective here, uh, let's just start talking about the kicking game first. Jonah, the Iceman Dalmas, we talked about icing the kicker. It does not work on him. Greg Bull found that out the hard way. Three uh, timeouts, and it still wasn't able to affect him. Still made the field goal. 26 out of 28 last season at 0.928 percentage as far as kicking goes. That is only the second all-time in Boise State history. Uh, 9.38 is the overall. Uh, Calakay in 2000, he was able to do it, but he only had 15 out of 16. So John Thomas is the first player to make 26 field goals and still only miss two in a season. He is go His goal is to be perfect. That's what he wants to be. Obviously, that's every kicker's dream. We'll have to see if he can make it. He is perfect between the 20 and the 40 and 49 last season. Didn't miss at all between 20 and 49. He had one missed field goal and one blocked field goal. And the block, you know, that's not all him on that. Obviously, part of that's got to do with the ball trajectory, but also it's part of that's got to do with the guys blocking up front. So only two missed field goals, and one of those wasn't 100% on him. When you look at Jonah Dolmez, when you kind of saw what he did that season, what's your perspective as a, as a fellow kicker when you look at this guy? Yeah, I mean, the kid's a stud. Um, and it honestly, it starts with, I think, off the field as well with how he is as a person. It always starts there. Um, he's a great kid. He works hard. He knows what he's doing. He knows the direction he wants to go. And he has a plan. And so from there, he's able to get on the field. He's able to continue that success, continue to work hard, and continue to have goals that um, – can kind of outreach and, and are a little too far fetched for sometimes even himself. And that's the best part about him because he's going to reach those goals and he's going to keep going. So if he wants to go perfect this year, I honestly, I would expect him to go perfect this year because whatever that kid says he wants to do, it's, he's going to be there, especially, you know, starting with a story where, you know, he has a tryout to walk on. He's not going to walk on. He has a tryout to walk on from there. He says, Hey, I'm going to make it. And I heard it early on when he was a kicker at Rocky and we put on a kicking camp at Boise state and all the kickers are out there and he's one of the guys out there. It's like, Hey, I'm going to be here one day. And we're just like, all right, yeah, let's, you know, let's see it. And he said it early on. And again, um, the sky's the limit for the kid. And that's, that's the best part. And he's, he's got more to even improve on than what he did last year. And he's, and he's continuing to work on that. Um, you know, we, we go out every once in a while and, you know, we get some stuff dialed and he just wants to keep getting better. And that's the best part about him. So sky's the limit for the kid. I'm excited for this year. He's the man. Um, we'll see what happens. Well, it's a great relief for Boise State fans to have a solid kicking game out there. Of course, that's something that in the past in certain years hasn't always been out <coughs> in the case. 
And especially when you have an offensive group, we talked about the offense and Ryan did when he came on the channel a couple of videos ago, when you have an offensive group that's still trying to figure itself out, a new offensive coordinator and Tim Plow is trying to figure things out. Sometimes you don't make it in the end zone. We saw that a lot last season. It is definitely a big relief off the shoulders of Boise State fans to be able to say, okay, every drive, if we don't get seven, as long as we get within, I don't know, 30 yards of the end zone, we're going to get three. And that's right. definitely having a great kicker like Tyler, uh, like, um, like Dolmez out there. Now, talking about the punting game, a uh, little bit of a different story as far as what to expect this season because the great punter, Joe Blasquez, is no longer with Boise State. He has moved on. He's run out of eligibility. Uh, he had an average of 43.1 yards per punt last season, 62 yard long, had a great leg, struggled at times with consistency, but the leg strength was never at question. Uh, he still he had his best season last year. He improved every single year, and last season had his best season overall. Um, again, still a little inconsistent at times, but it's going to be interesting to see. Boise State doesn't have that veteran out there in the punting game. That's going to be one of the questions we'll talk about later is who's going to be replacing him. Looking a little bit more at kind of the overall statistics here for the special teams, looking at the return game, Khalil Shakir, he kind of led the returners, at least for Boise State last season, uh, in the punt return game. Boise State averaged 15.5 yards per return. That's number one in the Mountain West. But again, Khalil Shakir, a big part of that, isn't going to be coming back yet. He had nine returns with 12.78 yards uh, per return. Cobbs was a big part of the punt return game on a couple of key moments there, and especially had that touchdown, the 81-yard touchdown for Boise State, the only punt return return for a touchdown. And then a couple other guys that contributed as well, where Tubner had a return for 18 yards, and then uh, Kaniho, the older, uh, had one for 11 yards. So there's going to be some interest to see who kind of takes over that main role, probably Cobbs. Uh, but again, the main guy, Khalil Shakir, you're losing a veteran in the kick in the punting game. You're also losing a veteran in the returning game. Uh, kick return games, Cobbs was the main guy there. And he had a long of 32 yards. So that'll probably stay consistent overall. But when you kind of look at issue at the overall performance last season for the return game, not a lot of return touchdowns. And again, of course, it's hard when you have your main guy who is a wide receiver out there tearing up the field and, and putting in so much effort to have him also doing most of the return games. Do you kind of see a little bit of a disadvantage there or do you like to have the best player you being used in the return game like that? Oh, no, you want the best guys on the field at all times. Um, anybody that's, you know, your starting guy who is your stud linebacker, stud receiver, they always need to be on special teams because those are guys that, that are going to make the plays and need to make the plays. I mean, you look at it, you know, go back to 2010, um, Doug Martin is on every single special teams. You know, you want guys like that and you want to keep seeing it because those guys are going to make the plays and they're going to keep going. Um, and you know, with losing Joel, that's, you know, it's going to hurt. And there's actually, there's going to be a new um, kind of strategy going into next year. I won't go into it more, but it'll be, uh, you'll see it game one. It's, it's going to be a good one, obviously with James uh, Ferguson, who um, Australian guy who, you know, he's going to bring a different aspect to the game where he's going to see some end over end puns, some rugby stuff, um, tight competition with Will Farron as well. Will Farron is also a very good punter. Uh, very strong leg on him. You saw a little bit of kickoffs last year and there's going to be a good competition with that, but expect Cobbs to continue returning the ball, continue to make plays. And that's the biggest thing is, is just needing to make plays. Uh, another part of the Boise teams unit was his blocking abilities, three blocked punts, four blocked kicks. Of course, um, I think three of those came in one game versus New Mexico, but that was another side of Boise State that they were able to bring to the front. When you see a special teams unit performing like that with the pride after the NFC bringing in those blocked punts, those blocked kicks, um, used in the returning game effectively, when you see all of that, do you put that more on the players or the coaching staff? Who is kind of the main inspiration there in kind of creating that end result? It's kind of both. It's, I mean, it's all both really because you have the coaches who, you know, they draw it up, they teach it. And then at the end of the day, you need the players to go out there, understand the assignment and then perform. Um, so it goes, it's on both ways because it's, you know, you can have the, one of the better coaches in the nation, but not have the right guys in the right spot in order to perform. So that's, you know, it's, again, it starts with the coach, everything they need, put guys in the right spot. And then from there, the players need to go out there and perform.
But one more storyline that we'll be tracking, we'll talk about this here in a little bit after we've talked about the uh, newcomer to the special teams, uh, well, is the loss of Danny Cottrell, the long, long snapper for Boise State. That's going to be a big replacement storyline, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But overall, last season, great job in the kicking game, of course, with Dolmez. A pretty good job overall in the punting game. Uh, you know, obviously, there's some consistency issues here and there, but 40 Point one yard average is a good average. And then we saw some great moments in the returning game. And of course, overall, with the blocked punts, the blocked kicks. I'll be excited to see what this special teams unit with a kind of a year under the new coaching staff is able to do going forward into this season. Well, you kind of already talked about it a little bit, but we can kind of dwell a little bit longer on it. Uh, the newcomer here for Boy State in the special teams, James Ferguson, Aussie kicker. He uh, three star overall, 12th at his position, and seventh in, the, in Australia overall. He is a guy I am really excited about. I have waited so long for Boise State to get an Aussie punter. I just think that the potential, the the end over end kicking that the Aussie punters do, and the end up rolls that you get at the end of it, I the long some of the longest kicks I've ever seen, maybe besides from the San Diego State punter, have come from Aussie kickers. So I'm really excited about this guy. I know you've already talked about him a little bit here, but this is a guy that you think is probably going to come in here and have a chance to go number one. Yeah. I mean, it's, they brought him in for a reason and they're not going to bring somebody from Australia all the way here to, you know, kind of be number two. So expect him to be the leader and expect him to be the guy out there to start game one. And it's his position to lose at that point. Um, But I've heard a lot of good things. You know, he's doing well. He's a great kid. Um, So we'll we'll expect some uh, new bells and whistles to test out game one and we'll see uh, what he can do. Now, Dalmez has had some experience here in punting. He was kind of used experimentally here in that 2020 season. Uh, five punts, 35.8 average. Is he in this discussion at all, you think, as far as potentially being one of these guys, or they're kind of locked in with, uh, like we were talking about, Ferguson? Yeah, they'll be locked in with Ferguson and, or Farron. Um, oh. yeah. And they're, yeah, they're going to be locked in with those two. Jonah just needs to worry about making kicks and kickoffs and, He's going to be fine. And then if there's an emergency situation, he goes in. But with Farron and uh, Ferguson, there's actually Ferguson has his red shirt here. So if Farron takes the job, then mm-hmm. that's where Jonah can possibly go in. But if Ferguson is starting, Farron is able to play because he red shirt already. So that emergency scenario wouldn't fall into Jonah. Now, Gavin Well, cousin of Sean Well, a fellow teammate of course, is on the roster seen some limited action in the 2020 season. Do you think he's in this discussion at all, or is he kind of a guy that has made kind of a backup option on this team? I think he's your dark horse. I mean, it's he's got he's one of those guys that has nothing to lose. Um, he can possibly go in for kickoffs. He can possibly be that that dark horse on on punting where it's it's like, okay, it is clicking for this guy. Um, and when you have nothing to lose, backs against the wall that's where guys shine. So don't, you know, never count anybody out and expect him to, to get on the field this season some way, somehow. Now we talked a little bit about replacing Contrell, um, the long snapper for Boise state currently on the roster. There's only one long snapper listed. It's the red shirt freshman, Mason Hutton, six foot six, 225. Um, is, is that probably, if you look at this as, as, as a red shirt freshman coming in to handle what is, is an underappreciated but extremely important part of the game. Is that something that is a redshirt freshman you can kind of just come in and pick up, or is or is there someone else maybe in the running for this slot? No, that kid's a stud. Um, he's also a very good kid as well. He uh, he's probably weighs more than two twenty five now. He's put on some weight. He's leaned out. He's really matured for what he's been doing. But the kid's a stud. He can really throw it back there. Um, it's going to be the coverage part where you know he hasn't had full body contact in I think probably since high school because Danny's uh, been doing it the last four years. So to replace Danny there, Danny was big on coverage, big on tackles. The kid was an animal. Um, so that's going to be the biggest thing is just getting out in coverage, blocking, knowing your blocking assignments, gaps, um, and, and just getting full out in coverage and making plays. Well, exciting to see what happens here and kind of having that inside perspective there of course obviously the big guy there and a uh, redshirt freshman but the coaches have confidence in him it'll be exciting to see what happens this season hopefully there's no drop off obviously 
there's a lot of veterans out there, at least in the kick game side of things. And there's some guys with some great skill level in the punting game who can definitely make up for any kind of issues or, 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 or maybe slow moments there uh, their experience can take over. So it'll be exciting to see what ends up happening here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the return game. For the return here, we've got Hobbs probably being that main guy for Boise State. Um, definitely he wasn't a kick return last year. I don't see him giving up that role. But usually you have two guys, especially in the kick return game. You have two guys out there. And the punt return game, you usually have a couple guys that you can go to. Who do you think is kind of that second guy behind Cobbs? Caples, um, you know, he's a, had some he's had some opportunities. Uh, he has shown a lot of speed. Ben Ford is fast. McAllister is fast. Do you see one of these guys potentially stepping up and being that second guy in the return game? Yeah, I mean – when you don't have, you know, a kick return or punt return last year where, you know, there's maybe not a big play made, that's where maybe you start testing out some different guys. But early on, again, expect Cobb to be the returner. If he's not making plays, you know, they may start dishing it out. Maybe a true freshman steps up or registered freshman steps up where, you know, he starts making plays in practice and they say, hey, let's test him out. Same thing with what they did with Avery. Avery you know, came in as a running back and then he was at a linebacker and then he was corner. Um, you know, it could be the same thing where they just start testing guys out and all of a sudden it starts clicking for somebody. Well, we've already kind of talked about, this was going to be one of my discussion points. We kind of addressed it using your top receiver there, but Boise State's always had, like you talked about, they've always had that energy where special teams, for some other teams, special teams might kind of that place where you throw some a lot of the backups on or you know guys that, that aren't getting a lot of experience out there for boy state it's always been a focus point there's been pride to be on that special teams you earn your way into those special teams units you get to carry the hammer out there you can go out and make big hits and big plays um on special teams i mean i remember what's versus virginia tech in 2010 where was it austin pettis or titus young one of the top wide receivers boy state blocked a punt so, you know, Boise State's always used their top guys on special teams. So, I, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Cobbs out there taking the brother role. We saw Khalil Kalish- Shakir out there last year. Hopefully, Cobbs, a lot of special teams, especially in that return game, is just kind of getting into rhythm and, and feeling the field. And hopefully, with a little bit more experience on the field this season, Cobbs will have get a little bit more opportunities to break some big ones this year. Or someone else who steps up will be excited to see what ends up happening there. We're going to focus on the final bit here. We're going to talk about Jonah Dolmez, what it would take to get to having a perfect season for him. Two off last year, no Bronco has ever done it. No Boy State kicker has ever had a perfect season. Very few kickers in college football overall have ever had one. It's very hard to get to. He has only three missed field goals in his career at Boise State. But, you know, obviously coming into next season, it's his third year with Boise State. You don't often see kickers going early for the NFL, but a guy of caliber, there's potential that he could be gone next season is his chance to go and get that out there, have that perfect year. What is it going to take for him to go out there and have that perfect season for Boise State? And can you uh, do just, it? Yeah, just continue to get the opportunities. And for him, it's, again, it's just going to be that mental side and um, just having his best days out there. And, um, again, just having those goals, continuing to attack the ball, continuing to be confident in what he's able to do. And being in the right scenario as well, you know, you're going to need a little bit of luck as well. And with the luck part, it's going to be, hopefully he has, you know, very good weather days. Hopefully there's, you know, he has the protection that helps him out. Um, You know, there's always a little bit of luck that needs to be involved, but, you know, I would expect him, you know, to go perfect if, if given the right scenarios and the right luck on his side. John Dalmez, he wants to be the greatest kicker of all time for Boise State. That's a stated goal for him. I've got to talk to his parents at the UCF game last season. They said that's something that he has said he wants to do. He wants to be the greatest kicker for Boise State. And you know what? The way that he's gone here, he's pretty close. He's sixth all-time on the list for made field goals with 33 just behind you at thir- who, uh, with 34 field goals. So he's just behind you for overall on sixth most field goals ever played. And he's never played in a bowl game. So that's 34, 33 field goals that he's made in two seasons at Boise State. And that's just regular season numbers there. Has never played in a bowl game. He would need 68 made field goals over the next two seasons, or he technically has three seasons because of the COVID year eligibility if he wanted to use it. He would need 68 field goals to top Brotsman, who has the most field goals all time for Boise State, and claim that record. Would he? What would it take for him to claim that title? Or, or maybe for fans, because it's really kind of it, it's bestowed really on the memory of the fans. What would it take for him to be remembered as the greatest kicker of all time for Boise State? 
does it take getting that record? Does it take having some moments where he wins some big games? He hasn't really had any game winning kicks. The closest is, um, closest he's really gotten is that he had that uh, field goal for Boise State versus Air Force and then the onside kick but of course that ended up getting messed up with an interception after all and then he had an opportunity versus Oklahoma State but then that got blocked so he's had a lot of kicks he's made a lot of moments but he hasn't actually ever been put in a situation where you look back and you go he won the game with that kick that's the, obviously every kick matters in the overall score but there's not been an end of the game time's running out he won the game moment for him what did it take for him be able to cement in the legacy of Boise State as a greatest kicker all time? Uh, he just needs to have that key signature game. Um, you know, in the bowl game against San Jose State, he uh, he missed one, but then he had back-to-back from 50 yards. Uh, but it's, it's about having that one key signature game where, you know, he goes out and he does what he needs to do and kind of cements us up with it. But again, it's, it's just – you know, having the team and having the coaches have him in the right place at the right time and for him to seize the opportunity when it's there. And, you know, when it happens, it's going to happen. And for him, whether it be a game winner, whether it be someone that were, you know, two back-to-back field goals just to tie the game, um, something where the opportunity meets um, where his goal needs to be as well. And that's where he'll have it. He'll have it this year where it's it'll cement him with, you know, having – what he wants to be the greatest of all time through through the school. I would expect it to happen this year. Excited for what can happen for Dolmas and the rest of the special teams unit this season. Let's talk about some keys to the game for the special teams, for the uh, sort of keys to the season for the special teams this year. So number one, I think, is going to be getting a little more creative in the return game. We talk about some of the, not necessarily stagnation in the return game, but you talk about there wasn't that many big moments. Of course, Cobb's return for 81 yards touchdown, that was huge. And Boise obviously had great consistency with averaging the most on punt returns in the Mountain West. But there really wasn't those that many moments where you had Avery Williams-style returns where you just looked at it and went, wow, that was, that was game-defining out there, and we really kind of uh, set the pace. And of course, that's a big part of the return game is kind of building that energy and setting the energy for the game. So I think that getting a little bit more creative in, in the return game where that's kind of mixing in some trick pay, plays, maybe some misdirections. We've seen in the past, Boy State's done those throwback plays where you have one guy running up the right side, then he stops and throws it back to the other side of the field. So then the boys in the Poinsettia Bowl versus, to the, uh, versus TCU um, in 2008. So, you know, I think that probably not necessarily that specifically, but just getting a little more creative with it in the special teams and something to kind of excite the unit and install a little bit more passion there in the return game. Yeah, no, I think you hit it right on the nail. Um, it's just about finding ways to make plays uh, to where you keep your offense off the field potentially. And, you know, they're getting more rest and finding different ways to, to win the hidden yardage is what's the biggest thing is winning that field position, the hidden yards there and just making stuff happen to where, you know, especially home games, you get the crowd on your side, you get everything going, you get momentum going, leads to big things. Well, key number two here for me is going to be create time for the punt. Obviously, that's important any season, but when you have a new long snapper there uh, who might have, obviously hasn't really, it's different when you're in practice and you're throwing the ball back versus you have, you know, a 200, 300 pound defensive tackle coming right up at you and you got to step up, you got your head down, you got to pop up and you got to block. So there's, I think, going to be maybe a little bit of some inconsistencies early on, depending on kind of experience level there and getting into the game. So creating time for the punt in the blocking unit is going to be big, big time for the punters uh, out there because they're going to be new as well to this game. So any, and especially if you're using the Aussie kicker out there with the rollout, that's going to become part of Boise State style anyway, is needed to create just a little bit extra time so we can get the punt off. So again, yeah, it's a little simplistic, but I think it's important here uh making sure that that's a focus make sure everybody knows their role and their position who they have on this on the uh return team for Boise state yeah and i think the biggest thing is just creating an identity um knowing your identity of what you need to do um get the basics down and with the basics make some plays again always trying to make plays always trying to find a way to get the hidden yardage and to make an impact and with you know finding that identity if you're going to roll out. You got to be one of the best rollout units that's going to be in the Mountain West slash the country. Um, but uh, definitely finding that identity and, and what you said as well. Well, and the third key I have here for specifically for Dolmez, and I think it's putting tight spots. Obviously, I know he wants that that to be have that perfect season, but overall, he just wants to be the best kicker 
that he can for Boise State. And I think part of that is he hasn't, he's gone out there, he's made some big kicks, but he hasn't really been tested or been put in those tight moments. I think, obviously, being stand up, uh, know me and make those kicks with getting ice shows that he has the ability to make the kicks when the moment is tight. But I think that part of building that is being that great kicker for Boise State, making sure that you have a kicker you can depend on when the game is on the line, something he hasn't experienced yet, is kind of creating those tight spots and a little more pressure on him so he gets used to those. So whether that's maybe going out and taking a longer kick that maybe he doesn't, maybe might be slightly outside of his comfort zone, or maybe it's you're in the red zone and you could go 50 50 with a field goal or a touchdown, and you go with a field goal just to put him out there on the field and experience and get him more time uh, out there in tight moments when everyone's counting on him. He just needs, we need that big, like you said, I think that big moment is definitely going to be coming this season, especially when you talk about some of the issues with the offense, with a lot of question marks at the wide receiver unit, a lot of question marks with the offensive line. There's going to down a game where he's going to be needed to win that game and the more times we can put him early in the season in some of those more easily winnable games in a tight spot the better prepared he'll be to go out there and make the big kick when he needs to yeah and again we've you know hit it on the nail it's it's just the opportunities he needs the opportunities he needs those spots and when he gets those spots he just needs to seize the moment and and make plays and that's that's the key to his year this year is he just needs to make plays well, that's three keys to get season for Boise State special teams. Get creative in the return, create time for the punt, and put Dalmas in some tight spots. Let's just end it real quick here with some predictions for Boise State season overall. Uh, just real quick, specific to the special teams, I think that Dalmas is going to be used a lot this year. I think they do. Um, especially early in the season as kind of Tim Plow, he's trying to cement a little bit of a different identity here with the offense. And then with that, I think is going to come maybe some offensive struggles. Boise State had a lot of issues with the red zone. Um, they had, Overall, they were in the top 20 for red zone production. But when you take out touchdowns and you just put it down to field goals, most of the points that Boise State scored in the red zone were on field goals. And I think a lot of that this season as well. So I think Dalton is going to get a lot of production, but I think he's going to end up three short of perfect just because he's going to be used so much. I think it's going to negate his ability to go out there and have a perfect season just because of how often he's being used and called on to kick. Um, I think that Domus will at least one game this season, one to two games. When you look back on it, you'll say kicking won that game. I think he's going to have the opportunities this season. Uh, I think that punting will be a little rough at first just because you've got a new long snapper out there. You've got a new punting unit out there as far as the scheme that with, and you've got a new – whoever it ends up being is going to be a new punter here for Boise State. So I think early on you'll have a little bit of roughness in the punting game, but I think it will find itself in the second half. You're going to look at the Boise State punting unit as one of the top teams, top units in the Mountain West. Um, I think that the return game is ready to have a resurgence this season. I think you have a lot of young players on this team that are that are skilled, that are, that are very maneuverable. You start looking at Cobb. You start looking at um, Caples. You start looking at McAllister, Ben Ford, all these guys – who might have a chance to come out here in the return game. You look at guys that want to prove themselves. I think that you're going to have a special teams unit that finds that identity that we were talking about earlier and has a resurgence in the return game. I don't know how many uh, touchdown returns we're going to have, but I think that you're going to see some big time moments in the return game. And then finally, yeah. I think will find its way to blocking a few more kicks this season. I think they'll block three punts and three kicks for just a pretty good overall uh, B plus to A, a rating for the special teams unit. I'm excited to see what happens this year. Um, I don't know if you want to have any predictions or uh, what you think the season's going to look like, or if you want to give a overall schedule review, what you think the overall record might be, uh, but whatever, any predictions you've got, throw them out now. I'm predicting a Mount West championship, a bowl game win. Um, obviously with the new schedule and, and what they're doing this year, where they're going to tape the top two ranked teams. Um, I expect us to win a Mountain West championship, whether it be, you know, dropping one game, I could see us maybe dropping one um, and then going into the postseason, And then, you know, sp as far as the special team side, having at least Jonah be first team all mountain West and then a finalist for Lou Groza. And then, you know, maybe something, you know, spicy with Ferguson possibly getting in the um, all mountain West, whether it be first, second or honorable mention. Do you think now, if we go one loss with the schedule that we have, we say it, I'll talk about it real quick here, Oregon state, New Mexico, UT Martin, UTEP, San Diego state, Fresno state, air force, Colorado, state, BYU, Nevada, Wyoming, and Utah state. If we have one loss in there, as you're predicting, um, so 11-1 and, and then 12-1 and one with a Mountain West Championship win, 
Any chance at all for the New Year's Six for getting that at-large spark for the group of five? Depends on who's, who is our loss and basically what happens with, you know, either Memphis or Cincinnati um, and those teams where, you know, if they have a perfect year, this and that. But cards got to go in the right direction. That's what I think will happen. Well, I think it's going to be an exciting season. I think that we'll see. We had a, a good year overall for the special teams last year. I think that we're going to see an improvement even in that for this upcoming excited to see what can happen. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Tyler. It was great getting to talk to you. Um, I've been, uh, you were one of the first players that I reached out to when we did this, uh, when I started having this idea of putting this special, this preview of the Boy State football team. And you were the first guy to say yes to me. Uh, so it definitely kind of kickstarted this entire dream that I had of being able to do this series. So it's been fantastic being able to have you on. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, good luck with your new child. Um, and Thank hope- you. Everything go continues to. I, I I love what the future looks like for you here uh, with these these startup leagues that you've had these opportunities to in really get your name out there, really get some film footage out there. I've been excited to see what ends up happening for you here in the future, whether that's in the NFL or the XFL, the USFL, or the CFL, whatever it is. I'm excited to see what ends up happening here for the future. You definitely do a great job of repping Boise State Bronco Nation. Once Bronco, always a Bronco, and it's great to have you out there. Awesome. I appreciate you, man. Thanks so much for the kind words. Well, thanks so much for coming on. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're going to be having the next video coming out here probably in a few weeks towards the end of July. We're going to be having Brandon Thompson coming on and helping me preview the Boise State secondary. And then after that, we've got one more video in the series. We're going to be having uh, Dryson James and Derek Schumann are going to be coming on and discussing the Boise State skill position, wide receiver, tight end. And I will be ending all of this with my preview, my scheduled preview for what we, I think Boise State's going to be doing this season. So there's a lot more to come. There's a lot so far. Link in the description for the rest of the videos in this series. Thank you so much for coming on again, Tyler. Thank you, everyone, for being with us today. And as always, go Big Blue! Yes, sir.